look at the clouds, look at the motherfucking clouds, me. The clouds I used to make are embarrassing. I've done two tutorials on this. It, they're shit compared to what I just learned. So boom, renders. This is what I've made very, very quickly because I realized there's a better way to make clouds with geometry nodes. Okay. To get both the cloud generator that we're about to make and a bunch of free VDBs of pre-computed clouds, all of that can be found at cgmatter.com. This video is sponsored by Squarespace and we're gonna talk about that later. I'm gonna make a circle. On that circle, I'm gonna randomly make some number of circles distributed on the surface. Surface, and then on those, I'm gonna make smaller circles, and then that's just going to repeat again and again and again. And it turns out, you, you modify this a little, it looks like a cloud. It's weird. Either way, let's take an icosphere, make that higher resolution, distribute points on faces, instance, another icosphere. Maybe like this time, because we're gonna have more and more and more, I'm gonna bring down the subdivision, and then instead of like picking a uh, smaller scale, that should be something that's randomized. Random value, 0.5 to 1. Overall, make it smaller, because each iteration needs to be smaller than the last and then join these together. So sphere with spheres, just play around with those settings. Now this in itself also needs spheres and I'm just gonna repeat this again and again and again. At this point, like all of this has that logic. So I'm just gonna turn this into a nice node group. I think at the end of this, I'm gonna throw a realize to make it just one piece of geometry, control G to group. I can then iterate again and again and each time I do want it to be smaller, so we need the um, scale to be dependent on the iteration. Like they should scale down. Sometimes I record a tutorial and I like lose interest as I'm talking myself. So let's get goofy. Goofy, retention. Okay, we're back, we're back. Maybe what I should do is every iteration, I should make it half as small. So for example, we start off with one, then we have an average scale of 0 0.5, 0 0.25, etc. Powers of 0.5 is what we wanna do. So let's do that. I'm gonna connect this here. We're gonna take the power of 0.5, one and two and three get smaller. This is what should be kind of iterated against. So connect the exponent here and throw this through a repeat zone. Bada bing, bada boong. And if we make the iteration be that power, well, I think we're cooking, although they are pretty big to begin with. So I'm just going to offset this iteration by one. So it starts at a higher uh, exponent. So iteration zero, one, two, three. Brilliant. That is the cloud, we're gonna make it look good in a second, but we have our iteration logic, which gets very expensive very quickly. And now I'm claiming if we start off with something that isn't a sphere, that is what's gonna make it look like a uh, cloud. What will I use instead of a sphere? Well, I'm just gonna scatter a bunch of points and use that as the uh, starting mesh, essentially. Let's take some random points. There can be like 10 of them. Right now they're all overlapping, which is why you don't see them. We're gonna give it a random value as a vector. It can go from negative one to one. And now we have this distribution. Distribution. So instance on points, the icosphere, this in itself should probably be a bit random and maybe more distributed in space. Okay, so th this is kind of like our cloud spawner that goes through our logic as long as we connect that there and ugh, <laughs> kind of gross, but it is working. I think if we play around with these numbers a bit, we're going to get to cloud territory. First of all, the scale of these uh, icospheres are a bit big. So I'm going to take the radius, bring it down by half and compensate by bringing more points. So I have more puffs. Honestly, once we convert this into a volume, I am pretty happy with it. We can just vary the seed to get new clouds. But before I do that, there's one more secret ingredient that I found is the thing that makes it look like a cloud. <laughs> if you look at pictures of clouds, maybe it's just the perspective or something, but it often looks like the bottom of them are fairly kind of flattened out. So it's not kind of this like ellipsoid or sphere, but it's more like a hemisphere. So if I can flatten out the bottom, which I don't know if it even is true, but it looks better than it will indeed look better. First of all, with these points that are scattered, maybe we shouldn't have them go as low as they are. So I don't want to set this to like zero so that they're all above, but just something slightly below, like negative 0.25. So we're still going to have geometry under here, but I figure we kind of sample what is underneath the Z axis and then kind of shift it upwards. What I mean by that is the very most bottom sections are going to be pushed up a lot more than something that's very near uh, the Z axis. So the more error there is, in a sense, the more I'm going to correct for it. What I can do is I can take a bounding box. What this bounding box will tell us is what is the minimum Z value, which is going to be negative, and what is the maximum. Now, this, of course, will change depending on the seed. But if I know these two values, I can create a, a linear map that goes from 0 to 1 and just use that somehow. In practice, you literally just use a bounding box node, which calculates super quickly and gives us the maximum and the minimum. I, of course, only care about the Z component, so I'm going to separate the Z component. This is the minimum Z value. This is the maximum Z value. How do I map this back to that 0 to 1 interval? 
Well, we just map range. What is it that we want to remap? We want to remap this kind of Z vertical component. So I'm going to take the position, say extract the Z component. And instead of going from zero to one, it should go from negative whatever to positive whatever, which is exactly defined by this minimum and this maximum. And now if I look at our geometry, you can see we have exactly this gradient where it's black on the bottom and that will hold for every single um, iteration. I'm going to set position and I'm going to combine. The reason for this is now I can, you know, use the Z axis independently. And then instead of plugging this in right here, which you can see is kind of doing a stretching proportional to where it is on the Z value, I want to heavily, heavily remap this using something like an RGB curve. So again, it should be the strongest at Z equals zero. So I'm just going to invert this. In other words, what we have here is when it's at the bottom, it will do the maximum distortion. And when it's at the top, in other words, Z1, it will do the minimum. You can see the very top of this isn't shifting. And to get a nicer uh, fall off, all we do is we kind of reshape. So do I want this? No, I think I want the exact opposite. There we go. So that is how you flatten a cloud without literally making it 100% flat, right? There's still like a bit of stuff going on here, which I think looks good. This tutorial in disguise is sponsored by Squarespace. It is quite literally the best place to make a website. And I know this because cgmatter.com, the best website ever made, is made with Squarespace. They make customizing and making web pages super easy. They have a whole analytics page to see who's coming to your website. But very relevantly to me, they have analytics on any product you're selling. So I'm selling like a Patreon-esque subscription. And related to that, payments are handled on their end. PayPal, all these credit cards, they just work automatically, which lets me run that side of the business. And then back to the idea of making web pages, they do have like a built-in AI to either rewrite or generate content on the fly. Head over to Squarespace, just make a website. And when you like the way that looks, you can launch that website and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Link for that is below. And assuming that we like the way this looks, the final step is we take this and actually make it a volume, which is where we can do actual shading tricks to make it look even better. So mesh to volume, boom. So to start off with, let's do EV because it is much faster. So you can see this is responding to our lighting, but it's very low resolution. Well, to start off, I can take my render settings and then for volumetrics, I can say compute more of them. So instead of a one to eight, I want every pixel to do kind of more heavy lifting. So as I go from one to four and then one to two and then one to one, we get more detail. I'm also going to bring up the steps. And then finally, one of the most important things is in the shadows. By default, the volume shadows aren't on. So just enable those. And now you can see we're getting something that is actually understandable. So as I bump this up to, let's say 200, we're going to get something that looks much nicer. We can take that and just multiply it to make it look uh, thicker. This can be done here or in shading. I'm just going to multiply by five. Now it looks thicker. And then in Eevee, we get a really nice looking cloud, which believe me, it will look even better in uh, cycles. By the way, this is going to compute slow. The point is we eventually export these. And I'll show you a trick I learned, by the way, to export VDBs, which isn't supposed to be possible. But because I used my brain, I found a little hack and I was so happy with it. That's how I made the pack of like 100 uh, clouds. I just changed the seed and exported VDBs. So let's bring the seed to like four and then five, whatever. This in itself should be a uh, group input. And the reason I I like that is now, especially if I uh, lowered the detail to like two iterations, so it will compute faster. I can make a, a copy of this. This copy can have a seed of like two and each cloud can be different from the other. So I'm just going to duplicate. This can have a seed of three. And without too much thought, you can literally just kind of combine these volume grids and they will just blend into each other. And note that we do kind of have a baked in detail slider, which is the iteration count. So initially we have our points spawned, then we do a level of detail, then we do another level of detail. You could even and bump this up all the way to four, but then you're going to get tens of millions of um, basically vertices or faces. It adds a lot of uh, geo. But remember, there's another way to get detail, which is using this um, volumetric conversion thing. So again, here we have very easy clouds and volumetrics, which I think look really good from the bottom because they're kind of flattened out. But I just want to show like basic lighting effects. So I'm going to put it inside the volume and make it kind of this like bluish purple. You're going to see where I'm going with this. This is how you make lightning. And now we have like a very basic uh, lightning storm, which I just think is a uh, cool thing to do. Now, remember, we haven't even gotten all our detail because this is a volumetric that has a shader, a principled volume that we can get even more detail out of for free. I'm going to change over to cycles, which make sure you're using GPU because it is going to be really slow. Otherwise, I'm even going to turn on the denoiser so we can see what's going on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my point light, which take forever to delete, and I'm going to replace them with a uh, sky texture. So easiest way to do this is use a sky texture, which looks like this. I mean, it's for the sky. I mean, this is made for this use case. It is for clouds because we are in the sky to make it so that we don't see the ground and we're more so in a higher altitude, like we're in a plane above the uh, clouds. Literally just take the altitude, pick a giant 
point number like 2,000 or even 20,000. And yeah, to get an extra pass of detail like I was talking about, we can make a basic material. And this is taking forever. How do I want to fix that? Each one of these clouds is calculating every time we make a change. We can avoid that by adding in a bake node, which will take forever. This is going to let us do the calculation once and save it. Hit bake. And when you do that, it's going to save that information. So you never, ever, ever have to calculate it again. Now that we have a single cloud and it's pre-baked, I mean, it's rendering super, super quickly. In fact, now that we're doing this baking process, we don't need to shy away from like adding in more detail. So what I mean is we can even go to four iterations and inside this distribution, we can distribute more points. In other words, more detail. I'm going to bring up the voxel amount. And then all I need to do is hit rebake and, you know, wait longer than last time. So that took about 30 seconds a minute to calculate. But now when we view this, we're going to get more detail. And I know I keep saying it over and over and over again, we can get even another passive detail in the material. So let me show you that now. I'm going to set material, apply the material called material. You're going to see nothing because, and I'm just going to rename this to cloud. It only has a surface kind of output, which the cloud isn't. It is a volumetric. Just get rid of your principled BSDF and instead get its uh, sister, its cousin, its brother, its superior BSDF connected to the volume. Now I want to show you, we don't only have this density attribute, which by the way, is the data that's being stored here. So this is what kind of the solid view is showing over here. So we don't only have the density map, but we have this multiplier. So if I set it to zero, you're going to see nothing. And then we can basically thicken it. So when it's set to eight, it's super thick. When it's set to like 0.1, it's thin. What I like about this is I don't need to put in a single number. I can put in something more complex, like a noise texture or something like that. I'm going to view what a noise texture looks like, not on the surface, but it's also a volumetric quantity, if you didn't know. Kind of hard to tell. But you're getting a different density value within this uh, volumetric, which again, we're going to multiply by the density to get rid of this uh, blockiness. I just want it to be kind of like more contrasty, which I can do with a color ramp, just like you're used to with normal materials. That should be kind of lower frequency, but detailed with some roughness. This is going to be what I multiply my cloud with. So literally, I take the cloud, I take this color ramp, and I connect it into the density. And now you can see it's kept the general shape, but it's basically added a free detail pass. Now, I wouldn't recommend literally setting the bottom value to black, which basically means we have some zero density transparent areas, but I would just increase it a little. If you wanted kind of a more, I don't know, volumetric cloud, you take it, you multiply it by like five, and now we have that fluffy look, but with an extra hit of detail, especially as you bring up the roughness, don't need to simulate like the biggest VDB in the world. I mean, it's it almost feels like a hack how easy it is, right? With the sky texture, we can make it any time of day. So here it's kind of like a, a noon. Let's make it kind of like midday at 45 degrees. This is something I want to export so that whenever I bring it into a new Geonodes project, I don't need to bake frame every time. You can just have a, a collection of VDBs, which is something I did make, right? So I just take VDB 20, I drag it in here. Now you can see we have that VDB. Let's bring in 26, right? This is our ultimate goal to be able to drag these things in here. Well, Blender by default, other than like a fluid simulation or like a gas simulation, doesn't give you that control. Except remember, we're baking this, which means internally, it must save it as some kind of file format. And in fact, Blender, under the hood, it doesn't give you access, is storing a VDB, at least if you're doing a volumetric. If it's a mesh, it's something a bit different. So if I go to this kind of baked frame node and I go into the baking settings, you're going to see we can either bake directly into the blend file or I can save this onto disk. This button right here will take the bake we already did and just throw it into our hard drive. So I'm just going to click this here, write bake to current directory. And you can see the moment I do that, my blend file, which is called cloud, comes with a blend cache folder. We have this folder right here which is called, it's called uh, me not being able to juggle windows correctly. It's called plain blah, 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 blah. That makes sense because this initial Geonodes object was called plain. We go into here, you're going to see a bunch of numbers. There are two folders. The one we care about is this blob folder, which has this VDB. So that's the golden nugget. So I'm just going to copy this onto the desktop. This is my VDB. But the beauty of this now is because we have a VDB, I can drag it in here and it will just import. And now it really will be, you know, instant because it comes in as a volume object with this density field that we can just copy. And it's really really is kind of instant here. So I can create a basic uh, cloudscape really simply. Voila, we have a very complicated cloud compared to our original VDB. You join the website cgmatter.com and you're going to get a hundred of these VDBs that I spent more time on. You can get the generator file, which I'll clean up. And I'm very proud of this one. I think we're getting really high quality Houdini level clouds, especially as you uh, combine them. So hopefully you learned something. Goodbye.